just uh, to finish up for my last video. Again, as I said, note that all of this is pure speculation beyond what actual data I have been able to find. Like I said, I quoted CBC's The Fifth Estate, figure on newspaper. Um, some of this you can find, uh, you know, actual information that Michael Moore has quoted from various places. Well, again, I don't generally use Michael Moore, but again, um, and before uh, you automatically defend about Michael Moore, um, you know, th that all of his info or all of his stuff must be crap just because it is Michael Moore that's, or, or this must be crap just because I quoted Michael Moore or what have you. That's what's called the genetic fallacy. Um, just because one thing may have been wrong by Michael Moore does not mean everything's wrong. So you've got to double check all those sources. Hence why for the bulk part, I, I quoted CBC's The Fifth Estate and the like. Now, but the thing, of course, is though, that even in public news, we've only had three terrorist attacks, what, three, four terrorist attacks in the past few years. Two in London, one in the U.S., uh, one in New York. Or, or sorry, the three in New, uh, you know, the, the the three in the U.S. that uh, three, maybe four in the U.S. that happened, uh, you know, on September 11th, of course, and one in Spain, uh, or was it two in Spain? Either way, the point is that they've been, you know, they've been minimal. Like, do we actually need this terrorist legislation to handle that? I mean, what about the Oklahoma City bombings and stuff like that before? What about the terrorist attacks of uh, Ted Kleczynski, the Unabomber? Uh, you know, there there have been terrorist attacks going back for years before 9-11. Um, before Did we need martial law or terrorist legislation to take them out? No. So why do we need the same legislation for now? What is it about, uh, about this worldwide network that's, gonna, you know, that's, that's necessary? I mean, if people are genuinely worried about it, <coughs> and if the U.S. government, I mean, if people have, uh, you know, I mean, given our, uh, our state of fear about genuine terrorist attacks, I doubt very much that a court would actually try to withhold a warrant checking on someone who might be a legitimate terrorist. I mean, we don't need all this stuff. It's needless. It's unnecessary. And, you know, and, but the thing, of course, is, is that we've bought it hook, line, and sinker. The government still keeps hyping that we need it. Otherwise, the fact that they would have repealed it by now. Uh, I mean, like, you know, what's going on here? You know, like, th these are my questions. And, that you know, physical theories aside, I mean, I suspect that you're right, you know. I mean, I've taken a look at this stuff. I even did some, I'm a chemistry student myself, and I even did some calculations on the fuel plane, uh, you know, the fuel coming out of the plane. I mean, there's enough kinetic, en there's, there's enough uh, energy, there's enough energy released by the explosion of, that, of, the, of those planes to cause the, uh, the heat melt that happened. But that still doesn't necessarily mean that Bush didn't have a hand in it. Or that the, uh, you know, that the, that the theories about, uh, about, uh, about, the, about, the, about aspects of the U.S. government or certain corporate interest trying to manipulate things for their own benefit, that is entirely possible. And uh, if anything, I mean, now granted, this may be pure speculation on some parts beyond evidence, you know, uh, you know, based off what evidence there is. But I do think that based on the documentation evidence, we should be at least keeping an eye on our government. Don't you think? Remember, Politicians and corporate heads are uh, uh, remember that uh, that, um, that the art of politics, the art of uh, of advertising, and the art of uh, magic. I am a magician by uh, by tradition. And I will demonstrate this. Um, okay, I'm I'm digressing from my argument here, and you'll see why in a second. Um, three of hearts, top card. I'm gonna take it, put it right inside the deck right here. Comes back up. I mean, that's just a basic right there, but you get the idea. I mean, the thing is that, you know, magicians and, uh, you know, politicians, magicians and the like, uh, or, or even, uh, I mean, you watch political debates and a large chunk of that is the critical thinking fallacies, ad hominems attacking each other's character. Advertising is a uh, means of subtle manipulation and misdirection. I mean, you know, this is intrinsic to the system. So if people, if the government keeps harping that we need infringement on our civil liberties, um, you know, then I am going to be a little curious. Needless to say, I'm going to be a little skeptical of the government's claim that the uh, that Osama was the total, uh, pay, you know, that that Osama was totally to blame. Uh, you know, I do I will uh, I do suspect that there was somebody in there that had a hand in it. Um, I dispute the necessity for the bulk of this stuff, and um, at least for Canada, where I am, and uh, you know, and I suspect for the U.S. too. Uh, you know, I I'm going to recommend this for for American citizens too. I'm watchful of my government. I'm watchful of your guys' government. I suggest that you do the same. You know, keep keep an eye on your national government. And you know, and if particularly what with this upcoming election, if the Republicans get yet again get in for another term, especially considering President Bush's unpopularity, what with the war in Iraq and everything else right now, you know, if, if they get back in again, um, I'm going to be starting to question some stuff. You know, I'd start seriously watching a little piece of history, which might be inappropriate for this after. Um, uh, without, I'm not going to compare to Nazi Germany. I'm going to compare to ancient Rome. In ancient Rome, 
Uh, when Caesar Augustus had killed off Mark Antony, who was the co, co who had been elected co-consul by the Senate at this time period, by the way, but had been uh, defected to Egypt and stuff like that. Um, after the, you know, after Brutus was killed off, and after uh, 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 after Mark Antony was killed off, and all that, Mark Marcus Antonius was killed off, and all this, um, Octavius Caesar, uh, as the uh, consul said, the Republic has been saved. However, there is still a state of emergency right now. Uh, you know, for fear that what would happen if another Mark Antony or another uh, Brutus showed up. So until the duration of that emergency is over, I'm going to declare myself Imperator just for the safety of the Republic. That set, that emergency lasted right until the fall of Rome. Qu that emergency, quote unquote, lasted right until the fall of Rome. The Senate and all the trappings of democracy that, uh, of the of Republican government that the Romans had been used to stayed right up until the very end. But it was quite clear that, uh, you know, de facto it was a dictatorial state uh, with just the trappings of democracy to keep the patricians and the other voting public. Heck, even the tribunes, the, uh, the people's representatives in the government were still allowed to be elected, but they had no power. The imperator was the one who had the power, and the whole concept was just to keep the trappings of democracy, to keep the plebs and the, and the patricians, i.e. the smart ones, from realizing that, uh, you know, being blindsided and misdirected with, you know, conquest and what have you, and, you know, uh, making them think that they were still in a democratic state, even though they weren't. And uh, what about the Reichstag fire in Germany, um, where, um, you know, they got elected in, uh, and, you know, the building was blown up, uh, you know, the, 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 pub the republic, uh, you know, the the, the parliament building was blown up and they blamed the Jews for it and you know there was a misdirection and atrocity that happened it became a dictatorial state and uh, you know I mean of course at that point it was explicitly a dictatorial state but you know people still kept it as like you know we're protecting the German people you want me in um, you know it, he became uh, Hitler himself was made uh, made himself a sufficient rock star in propaganda there were actually women there was actually documentation of, of girls who would actually write letters to him much like they would write letters to rock stars saying that they want to have his kid thus maintaining it like, oh, we love him, we want him in power still. Thus the dictatorial system was still like, you know, indirectly it was sort of a, a format of not necessarily democracy, but that they loved the guy, so therefore they wanted him in anyway. You see what I mean? It's still that same misdirection mentality. And so anytime I start seeing something that necessarily infringes more, uh, you know, the system for more than a year, I mean, the War Measures Act, when it was invoked in Canada to deal with, um, you know, in martial law in Quebec, to deal with the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the LPQ, I think it was, the, uh, you know, the, the, the Black Tigers or whatever, who were taking hostage terrorists, it lasted for no more than six months because they arrested all the people, they found them, and then afterwards they tried the people in a legitimate court of law. It didn't take that long to take out, you know, when martial law was declared, they dealt with the problem very quickly. You know, we don't actually need, I mean, how long has it been now? It's been seven years. You know, if it's lasting for longer than a year, then, uh, you know, ch and, uh, and if there's already examples of catching terrorists using normal methods of police work that, you know, from older times before we had this legislation in, then I suggest that we don't need it. And I suggest that there is something a little bit more sinister involved with, our go uh, with certain factions of our government, i.e., I wouldn't say all the Republican Party. I think the bulk of them are genuinely unaware. But I would certainly say the people who are, ba who are backing Bush right now and the people who uh, the various corporate interests who might be backing the elections would certainly uh, love a, uh, another means of trying to manipulate and um, you know, keep the people suppressed. You know, So I would be a little skeptical of our government, to say the least. Um, of the claims of how uh, that Bin Laden was totally to blame. And I'd be skeptical of the fact that we actually still need this stuff or that the state of emergency is as bad as they say it is. You know, heck, we could probably wean off half this stuff anyway. So keep an eye out. That's my main goal. That's my main point. It doesn't matter about the physical conspiracy theories. It ma what matters is the fact that the government may be uh, in moving towards a dictatorial uh, idea, and we should be constantly keeping a vigilant eye on the government. One eye on the government and one eye going on out there. Don't constantly look beyond our borders and not be aware of what our government's doing behind our backs. See what I mean? I will not be blindsided. That's, my only, that's simply my only statement. Anyway, that's my, own, uh, that's my own take on this. For what it's worth, take it for what you will. Um, if you want to just uh, call me a conspiracy theorist nut or what have you, um, that's your rights. That's what's considered an hominem attack. So um, if there actually is, a uh, if there is actual evidence to suggest that there isn't really, uh, it isn't really a dictatorship, or that you know that I'm uh, that I'm you know being more of a worry wart than I, uh, you know that I'm just I'm that I'm you know I'm being too much of a worry wart. Please do by all means provide it to me. It would give me peace of mind. But other than that, that's just simply what I'm saying. Take it for what it's worth. Toodles.